a lap dancing club in the middle of London's financial district. Open at lunchtime so businessmen can hold meetings and entertain clients. A leading women's group says the practice is becoming increasingly commonplace, and they say it's fueling sexism at work, because most women just don't want to go to strip clubs. They exit from those kinds of meetings, which means they're not privy to the kind of conversations, the kind of client relationship building that happens within that. The Fawcett Society is calling for an end to the use of lap dancing clubs for corporate functions, and wants stricter licensing laws to limit the number of venues springing up. Sure. They say the clubs objectify women and make a working culture already rife with sexism worse. This is London's newest lap dancing club. It costs five million dollars to build and is the largest of its kind in the UK. Its owners say they opened up in the heart of the financial district so their customers wouldn't have far to go. <laughs> club managers deny accusations women are being exploited. In terms of objectifying the, the female form, yeah, of course this industry does, as do many things. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, as long as it's, there's no exploitation involved and it's done in a positive light. Polly Courtney left a successful career in banking because she says sexism made her miserable. She's written a book about her experiences, some of them in strip clubs. Rippling against one of these poles was a platinum blonde with breasts the size of watermelons. They would go out in the evenings, go to bars together, go to lap dancing clubs and, um, and bond there. And of course when they bond out of the office, that has repercussions in the office. Bosses of the club we went to say everyone's welcome. Their patrons include men, women and also couples. But even though the doors are open to everyone, some women say they're just not comfortable mixing business with what passes for pleasure in a strip club. Lindsay Janis, CNN, London.